what is up guys welcome back to the channel guys we're back here with my guy steven Tyron. Tyron, Tyron. i be forgetting how to pronounce his last name but steven we here with five things that are shop shockingly cheap in sweden uh i don't think i ever done this video usually uh i've done quite a bit of his and some other people learning about sweden uh, i'm telling y'all sweden i was supposed to be in sweden but you know, I took on, had an opportunity to go coach and stuff. So I'm doing that right now. But Sweden, I'll see you 2024 summer, taking a whole Nordic trip. That's my plan. That's my goals. But uh, Steven, we here. Things that are shockingly cheap. Y'all hit that subscribe button, send out those recommendations. Hey everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I recently posted a video on my channel a few weeks ago talking about things that were very, very expensive in Sweden. Now, Sweden's a very expensive country. Maybe I, I did Across that the one. board, a lot of things are more expensive in Sweden than in the US. And I made a video talking about five things that I thought were shockingly or like extremely expensive when comparing the two side by side. It was very, very interesting to see the feedback from you guys in that video. One of the things I talked about was the meat, for example, comparing the cost of meat in America versus Sweden. And a lot of the responses were talking about how in Sweden people treat the animals so much better and that the meat quality is so much higher in Sweden. And I'm definitely not an expert on this issue, but I was just reading <laughs> the statistics from comparing the two countries side by side. In some cases, like for chicken breasts, the cost would be three to four times what we were actually paying for it in the US. And that to me is shocking regardless of the animal treatment. Yeah, and I think they're making fake meat. I bought some chicken breast. It was like three or four in a package. They're like huge too. They're not like regular. Like these are like big chicken breasts. The sands are like two bucks, three bucks. It's in a pack. I'm looking like, well, it was in a baggie, but the meat just like, it was raw. It was able, you were able to like shred the meat while it was raw. I knew it was fake. I knew something was up. They selling us fake meat. That's why it, it, I'm telling you, I bought chicken breast that was like two to three dollars. That's how like, you know, it's fake if it's that cheap for chicken. Chicken and bread, all these really. things that it could be such a huge difference. But again, I am no expert on the meat industry in Sweden versus America. And it's interesting to see your comments down below. Another comment that kept coming up very, very frequently in that video was, could I make a video about five things that were surprisingly cheap in Sweden? And this video I think was much, much more difficult to make because <laughs> in general, like I said, Sweden's a very expensive country, but there are some things that are surprisingly cheap here. And I'm gonna discuss the five things that really stood out to me and things that really were surprisingly cheap to me when I moved to Sweden. Now, the first thing that stood out to me as being cheap in Sweden when I first moved here around four years ago was the cell phone plans. Now, at that oh, time yeah. in America, cell phones for an individual, if you wanted data and everything, it would be, you know, between 30 and $50, I'm pretty sure. And in Sweden, there was a lot of these low budget service providers where you could actually get a phone plan for like the first few months for only 50 crowns so like at that time you know five six dollars a month and then maybe that would go up wow. to like 10 Dude. 15 dollars a month now with that being said i'm not sure if there's still a huge difference in the cell phone prices between the two countries but i have to say from being in sweden and using swedish cell phone providers here in sweden the cell phone service here is absolutely excellent i don't know too many cities mm. in the world where you can be down on the subway and have flawless, perfect subway service. I've read and my boy got the, well, this is two years old, so he might have the iPhone that was released that year. But I paid like over a hundred bucks, well over a hundred dollars. Been paying it probably since 2014, I think 2014. Been paying over a hundred dollars for different services. Like I had Sprint before, AT&T now, always been over a hundred dollars for an unlimited plan. And when I was with Sprint, it was always flush. I had an unlimited plan, but the bill was always different, which I knew they were just adding stuff and, you know, just taking my money. Uh, we do have some services. If you ever heard of Metro PCS, Boost Mobile, with those, you have to buy the phones full price. But the phone services are like 30 or 40 dollars for unlimited. They might be 50 now just because of the times now. But you have to buy the anytime you want a new phone, you got to buy it full price. With AT&T, I can just, I'm paying on my phone 
while I'm paying my bills. So that might be why it's a hundred dollars. But the phone is like twenty bucks. The service is the most, but you are paying twenty dollars a month. You pay your phone off maybe in a year, maybe two years, depending. But yeah, the phone stuff is it's insane here. My phone service sucks. Hundred dollars and it sucks. In the subway in New York, my cell phone service would cut out. In LA, same thing. I've mm -hmm. heard London is the exact same way. So it's something that I just have strangely taken for granted living in Stockholm that pretty much wherever I go in and around Stockholm, I've never had any sort of problem with service. Even if I go out on like a boat trip or like out to the islands, it's really, really good here. Now these next two wow. are sort of cheap shots, but I feel like this video wouldn't be complete unless I mention them. And number two is the healthcare. Now we all know that Swedish people pay extremely high taxes, but with those high taxes, you get a lot of benefits being a part of Swedish society and healthcare is one of those things. Normally, if I have to visit the doctor here in Sweden, I'll pay between 100 and 200 crowns for the copay, but then pretty much everything else is covered by the Swedish government healthcare. Nice. Same thing, if you have to fill out prescriptions at a pharmacy or something, you might have to pay a little bit, but then once you get to a certain point or if you've had a certain number of doctor's visits, you'll actually be able to go for free within a certain period of time. Now, even though this isn't technically free because of the high taxes, there is something really nice just knowing that if anything happens, you'll be taken care of here in Sweden. In America, a lot of people get their healthcare covered actually by their employer. Like I know my yeah. parents are both teachers and they get healthcare covered through their job, through their work. But I also know some people in America that are self-employed and that have to pay like thousands of dollars every single mm -hmm. month to cover the cost of their That's health insurance. That's ridiculous. Which is absolutely insane when you add that up. Now, as I was alluding to earlier, the third thing falls into this exact same category as something that is sort of funded by the taxpayers, and that is the cost of college. If you are a European citizen, you can get free college in Sweden. Now, as an American, I definitely did not come out ahead here. Uh, sometimes it seems like college is... It. Don't get me wrong. I, I love education. It's a good thing. But sometimes here in the States, I believe it's a scam. That's too much money. Too much. College should be free. That is too much money. My first two years of college, I was learning the stuff they pretty much taught me in high school. And I'm paying for this stuff now. The same stuff. Two years may, may have been worth me paying for because it, it was new information to get me in the field that I was studying. Two years. The first two years, no. I'm pretty much paying what I got for free. It's ridiculous. College in America is extremely expensive. And basically, if you looked at the cost of tuition, fees, the cost of living on campus, and all these things, it was between $25,000 and $30,000 every single year for me to go to college. Now, I did a special program where I could go through college really, really fast. And I actually got my bachelor's degree in only two years. But for somebody to go oh, nice. to college for four years in America, those things really, really start to add up. The whole ironic thing about the situation is my family paid thousands of dollars for my college education to America. And then I moved to Sweden where I am not personally benefiting from the free college and I'm still paying super high taxes. <laughs> Like, wait I minute. think it's better just to not think about that. The fourth yeah, thing wait, that is surprisingly minute. cheap in Sweden is boat trips. Now in Stockholm, boat there trip. is pretty much water everywhere. And I was very, very surprised because you'd see these boats that are going around Stockholm. And actually, to ride those boats, it's the exact same cost as riding the subways or the buses because mm -hmm. riding those boats is included in your commuter pass. When you scan your commuter card at the subway or whatever, or if you buy a ticket on the app, you can use that to ride the boats here as well. That to me is sort of mind blowing that you can basically have people that are commuting to work on a boat every day. And in addition to that, one fun thing that a lot of Swedish people like to do is go on cruises. There's all sorts of mm. cruises that go from I need Stockholm to, go on a cruise. to different parts of Europe, like to Finland, different ports in Finland, or maybe a little bit further south into like Estonia and some of these mm. other countries. I always thought that would be super, super fun to do on a cruise. And that it is weird. actually surprisingly inexpensive. And the last thing that is definitely cheaper in Sweden than it is in America is sports. Growing up as a kid, if mm. you want to play sports in America, it's extremely oh expensive. My. Especially when you're playing travel sports. Now this is a sport outside of school. It's so expensive, like even for little kids, like what really matters is I believe when it comes to travel sports is when you're in high school, maybe 
you just finished your sophomore year, going into junior year, and even going into your senior year. Those are the two vital times. Don't get me wrong. I love travel sports because it's an experience. You know, it's a good experience for kids to learn. Uh, you're gonna, you can travel, play some good competition and stuff like. But it's almost like, like these things <laughs> cost, especially here in the states. It, it's it's a lot too much. You're all, I've seen people pay almost two to three thousand dollars for these things, which these are nonprofits. So, you know, you can get donation and all this, but you know, some parents still have to pay. And these are things that are two, three thousand dollars worth. Like, unless you're LeBron James, you're not playing, paying nothing. Unless you're that good at basketball, you're probably not paying nothing at all. But other than that, it's expensive to let my son at five year old travel to play sports and. I'm paying two thousand dollars. That's ridiculous. He not don't even really know if he want to do this, and I'm paying all this money. I think, and that's just travel sports. But outside of school, it's it's a lot of money. You know, if you have a kid and they you see the potential and they can really play at the next level, that's what's important. But it's it's yeah it's 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 ridiculous. When I was a kid, it would cost like two thousand dollars a mm-hmm. year for me to play premier soccer. And I can verify today that this is definitely still the case because I work for a company that works basically with football or soccer, what we call in the US, and our clients in the US that are playing soccer at a high level, these kids, they are paying thousands of dollars a year still in club fees. I think the average cost to play premier soccer in California at a premier club, I think is like, $3,000 $3,000 a year, which is absolutely insane. I'm not 100% sure my on goodness. exactly how much it costs to play sports here in Sweden, but I just know from my Swedish colleagues' reactions to how much it costs in America, they're always extremely surprised by how expensive it is. <laughs> so with that being said, guys, those are the five things that I thought of that are cheaper in Sweden than in America. I'd love to hear which one of those five surprised you the most, so leave a comment down below in the description or let me know if I missed anything. And with that being said, guys, I will see you in another video. Okay. Yeah, that's, I like this. I like this because good to see you go to Sweden. It's going to be, I can have a nice boat ride for sure. A nice cruise at a cheap, cheap price. Uh, They're kind of cheap here too versus like flying somewhere. I would say flying to another state. You might as well go on a cruise here in the States. Uh, Might pay like 500, 600 bucks, you know, for a five, seven day cruise. If you go stay somewhere to another state for like five, seven days, it might cost you like three times that, which is ridiculous. Unless you just get a cheap, cheap flight, but you still got to pay for a flight. This is the thing when it comes. You got to pay for flight, got to pay for um, hotel, got to pay for travel because you still might have to drive or catch an Uber or stuff like that. So those three things knocked off when you're on a cruise here in the States. And food and stuff. I forgot about food. So even food, I believe, is covered. So it's, I would love to take a cruise. That's my that's my goal this year. Maybe me and my wife can go. But all in all, this was good. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this as well. Uh, always enjoy Steve. I wish I can get him on a podcast. Maybe I can. Maybe I'll finally have that chance to collab with him when I'm in Sweden. That'll be cool, right there. But until then. I'll be here doing more Swedish things. So y'all make sure y'all add some videos to the playlist. I think this, oh no, that's not my playlist right there that I'm looking at. But I do got a playlist that y'all can add. But that's all I have. Y'all be blessed. Be the best and be you. I'm out.